Hey everybody, it's Eric from EP Autos, your libertarian car guy, and I'm doing a walk around here of this 2015 Infiniti QX. Uh, it's, mm, for the most part, um, a carryover for the, for the new model year. Uh, people with a sharp eye will notice the new front clip, uh, in particular the new grill, the new lower front fascia, and the more squared and rectangular shapes here for the turning lights. Uh, they modified that previously, they were round. Uh, but from the side profile, it's still the same familiar cue. I'm going to go around the back here, and this is a special request for one of our EP Autos regulars. I'm going to try and get uh, uh, a little bit of audio here of the uh, exhaust sound. From the uh, 400 horsepower 5.6 liter V8 that's standard in this thing, um, one of the Q's main competitors, the Cadillac Escalade, has been updated significantly for 2015 and is kind of caught up in the oats department. Uh, it now has a 420 horsepower engine. However, um, straight line performance of the two is really close. Uh, the Cadillac is slightly quicker, but not so much that you'd notice. Uh, this gets to 16 in about 6.7 seconds. The Cadillac with the new engine gets there in about 6.4. The big, big difference uh, between this and the Cadillac, though, uh, is that the Q is still a legitimate SUV in that it has a two-speed transfer case and low-range gearing, which the Cadillac does not. The Cadillac has a permanent all-wheel drive system, very much a street-oriented car, or SUV, that is, whereas this thing is fully capable of going off-road if you dare to take a vehicle like this off-road. Uh, you can probably see down there. Uh, out into the woods, that's the field where I took the QX. If I had an intern, anybody want to apply, uh, I could have had the intern film me doing some off-road work, um, but I wasn't able to do that. Uh, at any rate, um, the only other vehicle in this class that also has that kind of capability and the three rows and the size and everything else uh, is the Lexus LX um, 570. And that thing starts at 83,000 bucks. This thing's a comparative bargain starting around 63. Cadillac's more expensive too. The Cadillac starts around 71, uh, just FYI. And you could, of course, also cross shop this against the uh, the Range Rover, uh, but the Range Rover also is actually, I think, a little bit smaller than this. Um, one of the other major changes for um, the new, uh, well, for the 2015 model year, um, is a new um, special limited package, which is probably in honor of the last year of this this generation QX. Uh, it's a $10,000 package, and it comes with. Uh, uh, truffle brown interior trim, the QX Limited, uh, and a number of other um, interior enhancements. Let's have a look at the inside of the vehicle. Uh, you can see it's really nicely appointed in here, really nice quality leather, and I wish the thing wouldn't beep at you when you keep the door open like that. It's annoying, but they all do that. One thing that the Q doesn't do, um, though, and that no Nissans and no Infinities do, even in 2015, and I'm just hoping it continues. I'm sure the safety cult is going to find out and crucify somebody. But you can actually drive the Q without buckling up for safety. Um, and all that will happen is that the little red icon in the dashboard will light up. Uh, you will not be harassed by buzzers for failing to buckle up. Let's have a look at the console here. And you can see the, the four-wheel four -wheel drive engagement system. And there's the four low range. Of course, you've also got tow mode. You've got snow mode. Um, here's a shot of the back. Let me get out and take the back. Again, very nicely appointed, really high-end looking leather. Uh, the Q ages well. Uh, this vehicle is fundamentally the same and has been the same for several years now, but it's been tweaked such that um, it's still a very current and competitive vehicle in the class. This one, of course, has the uh, optional DVD monitors for the individual passengers back here. Just to show you some of the nice little detail touches, you've got heat ducts here for the second row. You can see those which is a nice feature to have uh, so that the second row people don't get cold uh, and get warmed up as quickly, as a matter of fact, uh, as anybody in the front row. The third row, see how that flips and forwards? Very easy. Uh, just touch it and it goes. Um, pretty decent accommodations back there. Really the, the only deficit, and this is true across the board, of any real SUV that's based on a rear wheel drive layout and accordingly has um, an axle in the back and uh, all that other stuff. Um, is that you don't have a drop here for your feet. You see the, the footwell here in the front, you got that. So you're kind of sitting up a little bit um, in, 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 a, in a crunch position, but it's not, it's not bad at all. Uh, adults can sit back there um, for fairly long trips and not be tortured. Um, and when you fold those flat and then fold these up, 
you've got a ton of space back here. Um, you can uh, you can use this thing for uh, all kinds of work if you wanted to. Uh, not that you would generally, but you probably could if you felt like it. Um, and the final commentary I'm going to make here. Uh, these things have been derided SUVs as a class for quite some time um, over fuel economy. Gas is now under two bucks a gallon. Uh, it may not stay that way for very long, um, but it really doesn't cost that much right now uh, to operate and feed one of these things. Uh, it's back to where you can fill the whole thing up for about $35 as opposed to $70 or $80, uh, and that's really nice. Um, anyway, uh, the review will be up shortly at epautos.com. I hope to stop by. We have some new Clover videos up. We also have some commentary up about the lockdown in New York City over the snowstorm. Uh, lockdowns are unfortunately becoming a, an all too common characteristic of life uh, in the United States these days. So, signing off for now, and we'll catch up with you the next time.